Mm -hmm. Alright, cool. So, what we're going to do is go through the muscles, basically, uh, now. Okay. Just go, yeah, just go, like, um, just go. We're going to start here with muscles of the face, or facial expression. Okay. So you can see that there's, there's a circular muscle here that surrounds your eye. That's called orbicularis oculi. And that's going to be involved in, like, squinting your eyes. That's orbicularis oculi. The circular muscle that surrounds your eye. Orbicularis oculi. There's a circular muscle here that surrounds your mouth or lips. That's called orbicularis oris. So orbicularis oris is going to be like one of the muscles you use to kiss. Kind of pucker up. So that's orbicularis <laughs> oris. Okay. Um, I believe you also need to know the zygomaticus muscles. Is that on your list? Zygomaticus major and minor for the muscles of the face. We don't have face, actually. What does it say? Oh, wow, you guys only have three muscles for the head and neck, huh? All right. Awesome. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing a rap book, can you call it material? Here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think it costs the same. They just go over a lot. A lot. All right, so uh, what you guys have there are chewing muscles, muscles of mastication. So you have temporalis and masseter. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> temporalis is this muscle here, and that's right on the temporal bone, and that's involved in chewing because it attaches to your mandible. So when you chew, you can kind of feel your temporalis. In fact, if you chew a lot, and then that hurts right there, that's your temporalis muscle. It gets fatigued. Okay. Now, masseter is this muscle here, kind of on the inferior side of your mandible, in fact, when you chew, you kind of have your hand there, you feel it project out. That's a master. In fact, if you guys go to the dentist and they inject for a teeth in your mandible, they inject into that muscle, the master. They the aim for the master. It's right in that muscle. Um, okay. I'd say probably. So you got temporalis and masseter. Those are both muscles of mastication, or chewing muscles. Okay. Now, this neck muscle here is called sternocleidomastoid. Sternocleidomastoid. The reason being is it goes from the sternum to the clavicle to the mastoid process of the temporal bone. Sternocleidomastoid. This, this is actually kind of important significantly. <clears throat> I'm sorry, it's more important clinically because your uh, carotid and jugular vein are right next to sternocleidomastoid. So if you find sternocleidomastoid, jugular vein is right next to it. So if you were to do like a jugular vein IV or whatever, it sounds kind of gnarly. But <laughs> yeah. So sternocleidomastoid, right okay. That should be it for the face and neck, am I correct? Okay. Now what I probably need to do is actually get my list here so I don't over teach you guys or under teach. So let, me, let me get the list going really quick and hopefully we don't run out of video on my phone. <laughs> Alright, so now we'll, well now we'll talk about muscles of the shoulder and chest. Okay. So. This large muscle here is called trapezius. So all of this is trapezius. So you're going to find part of it here in your neck. It also forms part of your uh, middle of your back. Now it's all trapezius here. Okay. Now this shoulder muscle here, kind of like in the acromial region, right in your shoulder, that's called deltoid. Right there. That's the deltoid. Okay. Um, now there's another muscle lower, kind of inferior to trapezius, right here. That's called latissimus dorsi. Now latissimus dorsi is going to be an extensor of your arms. So it's going to pull your arms back. And latissimus dorsi in beef is like carne asada. So you can kind of, it's that really thin beef. So like that's latissimus dorsi in cows. It's carne asada. It's good stuff. <laughs> uh, now, there's actually some scapula-associated muscles, like teres major. In fact, teres major is going to be a muscle that goes to your rotator cuff, so one of the muscles you use to rotate your arm around. And teres major is this large muscle right here. So on this model, it's number 12, but that's teres major right there. So teres major is one of the muscles of your rotator cuff. Now, it can get big enough to where you can see it, like, you know, kind of pop out behind the skin. That's teres major. Okay, so let's review those. What's this one? Trapezius. Good. What about this one? <laughs> yeah, carne asada. Yeah. <laughs> Latissimus dorsi. Okay, right there. Latissimus dorsi. 
That's like your last. Okay. How about this one? Deltoids. Very good. And how about this one? Teres major. Now, teres means rounded. So if you kind of look at the muscles, see it's a little rounded. Not too, but teres major. Okay. Um, now, anteriorly, you will see some of the pectoralis muscles. So it's like kind of like breast muscles. Uh, this one here is going to be pectoralis major. It's larger and more superficial. This one here is pectoralis minor. It's smaller and deeper to pectoralis major. So on this side, they've actually removed pectoralis major. So you can see pectoralis minor deeper. So pectoralis major, pectoralis minor. Okay, so pectoralis major, pectoralis minor. Okay. Um, now there's another one over here called serratus anterior. Now serratus anterior, we're going to see better if I take this arm off. Okay. So we're taking the arm off. This is serratus anterior right there. So you see how like these muscle fibers kind of look like they're like a, the edge of a serrated knife. Right there. That's serratus anterior. Now it attaches to your scapula, and it, it actually protracts the scapula. So it actually pulls your scapula forward. Uh, the dorsal side would be the back. Okay. So that's the radius anterior. And that's it for that group, you guys. It's not too bad. Um, I can't get this back on. Let me take this delta off. All right, so now we're going to do talk some more about muscles of the rotator cuff. Now, if I flip this model posteriorly, you can see the scapula here. And you can see more of the scapula because I've removed the deltoid. And now, if you guys remember, there's, there's the spine of the scapula. That was that large sort of bony ridge or spine right in the middle of the bone. And you guys remember that the fossa above the spine of the scapula was called supraspinous fossa, and the fossa below the spine of the scapula was called the infraspinous fossa. Now the muscles are named correspondingly to their respective fossa. So this one's called supraspinatus, this one's called infraspinatus. So supraspinatus, infraspinatus. Okay. Those are both muscles of the rotator cuff. Supraspinatus, infraspinatus. Um, we'll, also, I'll, we'll also have another one called subscapularis, which we can see if I remove this arm, that one's found in the subscapular fossa, that's this. So remember the anterior side of the scapula, subscapular fossa? Maybe you guys have, didn't know that, I don't remember. But subscapularis is going to be on the anterior side of the scapula. Now you see this only if I can remove this arm. If the arm's not removed, you won't see subscapularis. So subscapularis, the anterior side of the scapula. Okay. All right. <clears throat> um, now we're also gonna have Terry's minor, which is right here. So that's Terry's minor. So that's Terry's major right there. This little guy is Terry's minor. Okay. So Terry's minor, that one. And that's kind of hard to identify, so I wouldn't worry too much about this. Because it look, on this model, it looks very similarly to um, infraspinatus. But that's Terry's minor right there. Just superior to Terry's major. Okay. Um, so, <coughs> now we'll talk about muscles of the arm. It's not too bad. These anterior arm muscles here are called flexor, these are the flexor muscles. Okay, so what they're going to do is actually flex the arm at the elbow. Okay. So this muscle here, it's more superficial. That's called biceps brachii. Uh, it's a bicep muscle. Okay. Biceps brachii. Now deep to biceps brachii here, we have a muscle called brachialis. That's brachialis. Just deep to biceps brachii. Now both biceps brachii and brachialis are both flexor muscles of the arm. Okay. Now, uh, these muscles back here, these are called your triceps muscles. So this, this is called triceps brachii. Okay. Now, um, just notice as a group called triceps. That's it. 
So posterior upper arm, the triceps. Anterior upper arm, you have the biceps brachii, deep to it, brachialis. Posterior upper arm, the triceps. Now your triceps are extensor muscles. Your biceps and brachialis are flexor muscles. Okay. Um, so here on the forearm, the, is this anterior or posterior, by the way? Uh, yeah, exactly. Because if you're looking back at the hand side, it's got to be posterior. If it's palm side, it's anterior, right? Due to the anatomical position. So this person's not in the anatomical position. But this is the posterior forearm. All the muscles here in the posterior forearm are extensors. So they're going to extend the hand at the wrist. Okay. Extensors. Posterior forearm muscles, these are extensors. Okay. Now the anterior forearm muscles here, these are flexors. Okay. Okay, so the anterior forearm muscles there are flexors. Okay. Now, brachioradialis, coronator teres, and supinator, just scratch those off. Don't worry about those muscles. Guys. So remove those from your list. Because we can't see those very well in this model anyways. And we gotta cut, we gotta cut some stuff out. The next three on that list. Brachioradialis, supinator, coronator teres. Okay, so now we'll talk about our some muscles that are involved in uh, breathing or respiration. So we'll have a series of muscle, muscles called the intercostal muscles. Okay? So remember, these are your ribs here. Okay? So the intercostal muscles will be muscles between your ribs. You'll okay? so have internal and external intercostal muscles. Don't worry about the difference between internal and external intercostals. Just know as a group, they're called the intercostal muscles. Okay? And they're muscles that are found between the ribs. So intercostals between the ribs. Now, just 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 so I can tell you guys, uh, just so you know, don't worry about this for the test. External intercostal muscles are for inhaling. So take a deep breath. External intercostals will help you inhale. Internal intercostals are for exhaling. So if you, if you exhale, force the breath. Internal intercostals. Okay. But just know, as a group, the inter the intercostals are between the ribs. Okay. Um, now we also have the respiratory diaphragm, which is going to be a large muscle that separates your thoracic cavity from the abdominal pelvic cavity. And you're going to see the respiratory diaphragm on the inside here, on the inside of the model. I just took the chest plate off. Okay? You see the respiratory diaphragm here. The, um, yes, what looks white there. So what looks white is the respiratory diaphragm. That separates your thoracic cavity from abdominal pelvic cavity. That's the respiratory diaphragm. That's the largest muscle for, for breathing. And I'm just leaving sheets for you guys to see. So respiratory diaphragm. That's also skeletal muscle. The ones that are voluntarily that, um, Okay. The you can only see that from the inside. So this this has piece this piece has to be off for you to see your respiratory diaphragm. Okay. All right. Let me put this back on. These models are pretty intricate. They don't go back together well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. So let's go over some of these ab like abdominal wall muscles. I was just going to ask, what time are we going to switch at? Uh, we'll do 15 minutes. Okay. So. Let's do these abdominal wall muscles. Um, you're going to have the obliques. Now, there's, there's internal and external obliques. Don't worry about internal versus external. Just know as a group, these are the obliques. Okay, so it's sort of on the lateral trunk here. These are the obliques. So the oblique muscles are actually involved in like rotation of your trunk and also lateral flexion of the trunk. And they're also involved in. Um, uh, Forcibly exhaling and, uh, and like defecating and urinating that kind of stuff. But those are your obliques. Okay. So just know as a group, the obliques. Now if you look if you look at the muscle fibers, see how they go sideways? Like here the muscle fibers are going this way. On this side they're going that way. Well they go oblique. So I don't know if we talked about this, but the oblique plane goes sideways. So you have like you know the mid-sagittal, transverse, and coronal planes. Oblique plane goes like this. 
Okay, so the muscle fibers that run in the oblique plane there, those are the obliques. So don't, but don't worry about internal versus external. Um, now, um, these ones here, this is rectus abdominis. It's like your six pack. Okay, now, uh, there's actually four, there's actually, uh, four groups of muscles, so it actually be like an eight, like a, theoretically you could get like an eight pack, you count these, one, two, three, four. But the rectus abdominis, these are like your six pack muscles, they're flexors of the trunk. So if you do this, that's rectus abdominis. Okay. So rectus abdominis. Okay. Oh yeah, transversus abdominis, you're gonna see uh, deeper. So if I took if I take this chest plate off, and you look on the inner surface of the abdom abdominal wall, you'll see fibers that run across. Those transversus abdominis. But just kind of consider that as part of the obliques. Don't worry about identifying the specific transversus abdominis. Just know as a group those are the obliques. Okay. Um, now if we go posterior on this model, we'll see some of the gluteal muscles. Okay, so you have like gluteus maximus here. So the big butt muscles here, gluteus maximus. Okay. Now deep to gluteus maximus, you'll see like gluteus medius and minimus. Don't worry about gluteus medius and minimus, just know gluteus maximus. Okay, so don't worry about identifying those. Just gluteus maximus. So you can kind of scratch gluteus uh, medius and minimus off your list. I will also post a modified version of the list. That way, if you miss something I might have said, then at least I'll have another hard copy to see. Okay. So, Gluteus Maximus here. Okay. Um, now, on the lateral part of the thigh here, actually, let's look on this side. You can see it better. You guys see this muscle here? This is one called tensor fascia lata. Tensor fascia lata. It's an abductor of your thigh. So it does this. Abducts the thigh. That's tensor fascia lata. And it's a muscle that connects to your IT band or iliotibial tract. Okay, so tensor fascia lata, right there in the lateral thigh. Um, oh, pelvic diaphragm. Okay, so the pelvic diaphragm. I'll come back and show you guys. Pelvic diaphragm would be like pelvic floor muscles, and those would be like your, like Kegel muscles, that kind of stuff. Um, but those are also involved like in vomiting, yeah. Yeah. Um, and defecating, and urinating. Okay. Those are pelvic floor muscles. I'll show you guys that um, at the end. We'll come back to that. Because I gotta take I gotta take this piece back off, and it takes a while, so we'll come back to that. One. <laughs> okay. So let's do some more muscles of the thigh. So muscles in the thigh here. On the anterior side of the thigh, these are called your quadriceps, okay, because there's four muscles here, quadriceps. On the posterior part of the thigh, these are your hamstrings back here. Oh, yeah, for the most part, Hamstrings. And we'll get them out So for the quadriceps, there's four muscles. We'll have vastus medialis, vastus lateralis, uh, rectus femoris, and vastus intermedius. Let me show you guys these. So... Um, these are quadriceps here. This is on the lateral part of your thigh. So this is this is called vastus lateralis, right there. Vastus lateralis. Okay. And the medial part of your thigh, right here, that's vastus medialis. Vastus medialis. So you got vastus lateralis, vastus medialis, and right in the center here, rectus femoris. Rectus femoris. There. Now, if I take rectus femoris off, if I take rectus femoris off, there's a muscle deep to that that's called vastus intermedius. That would be the fourth of your quadriceps. Fourth one of your quadriceps, vastus intermedius. Okay. We got to take rectus femoris off in order to see that. Okay, now you guys see this long slender muscle here? This is one called sartorius. It's, it's a lateral rotator of your thigh. So if you laterally rotate your thigh like that, you're using sartorius. 
that's the long, actually, that's the longest muscle in your body, by the way. So torus. Longest muscle in your body. So torus. Pretty cool. All right. Um, so with the forearm, all you guys have to know is this is tensor groups and flexor groups, okay? And it'll be the same when you guys look at the model over there as well. We'll talk about them. Um, they are flexors, again, um, when you're dealing with uh, joints, it's going to be where you have the flexors and you decrease the angle. All right, guys, let's go over the hamstrings. i got to come back to, like, pectineus and those ones. We'll just get hamstrings out. So the hamstrings are the posterior thigh. These are flexors of your leg. So if you do this, using your hamstrings. Right. So your hamstrings are back here. These over here, lateral part of your posterior thigh, this is called biceps femoris. Biceps femoris. Lateral part of your posterior thigh. Not biceps brachii, biceps femoris. Okay. Sorry. Can just fall apart. Okay. Um, now, medial to that, we got to, we have two other muscles we can see. Yeah, the, the this one that's more superficial, that's semitendinosus. Deep to semitendinosus, there is semimembranosus. Okay, so you guys got to look kind of closely. But the one here on the top, it's got kind of a long tendon. That's semitendinosus. Deep to that, and kind of more posterior or anterior. That would be semimembranosus. Okay, those are two of your hamstrings muscles. So semitendinosus. Semi-membranosus. Okay. Um, now let's go over muscles on the on the leg down here. Okay. So here's your tibia, this bone. It's your tibia. Okay. Now this muscle here, right next to the tibia, that's called tibialis anterior. Tibialis anterior. Right there. Pectoralis region. Okay. Now these anterior lower leg muscles, these are extensors. Just like your quadriceps. These are extensors of your foot. So you have tibialis anterior right there. Now just lateral to tibialis anterior, this muscle here is called extensor digitorum longus. That's actually going to extend your digits. So kind of, you can kind of curl your toes up toward your head. Then you're using that muscle, extensor digitorum longus. Now the posterior part of the lower leg, we'll see two more flexor muscles. We have soleus here. I'm sorry, this is gastrocnemius here. So this is gastrocnemius. And then deep to gastrocnemius, you kind of see a little edge of it right there. That's soleus. Soleus, just deep to gastrocnemius. Next region, what can I go over? So gastrocnemius and soleus. This is part of... Adduction is close to your body, and yeah, an abduction is away. I say I pronounce it abduction, just so you know that there's. How does it affect the uh, move your arms away from your body? With your, um, you have your. Is it shorten the pecs and then that bring your arms closer together? Part of it does adduction to cool, guys. Well, Stop there. Because like the uh, you're the longest. Uh, yeah, I don't want that. Abduction. It's if you if you have your pectoralis major.